Hey, welcome to Equivoke. This is a visual novel or visual novelette about a young apprentice in a mag magic shop and the art style looked really cute and the whole game looks cute so um, I decided to play it and uh, you can get it on Steam for $1.99 and I'll leave a link in the description below and you can check it out. Anyways, let's begin. Hey kid. Is someone talking to me? Probably not. Hey kid, wake up. Good morning. Uh, I, I was just resting my eyes. <clears throat> Where are you now? Well, that's a new one. Doesn't seem like a good idea during business hours. You know, I thought to myself, it cannot possibly be that the young rabbit minding that shop is asleep in the middle of business hours. And yet, here we are. It would do me good to remember that I'm often wrong. Uh, wait, wasn't the door locked? Hmm, was it? Yeah, what are you doing here? Wait, I know you. You're Mint the Splendid. Uh, um, I guess it would be rude to say this, but, uh, I'm a huge fan. Can I have your autograph? Autographs are five bucks. Sorry, even a magician has to eat. Times are tough nowadays. Okay, understandable. I'm a huge fan. Can I smell your hair? Great. Uh, why are you in my air? Master Sabgrass's magic shop. So this is what old Sabgrass retired to do, eh? And what are you exactly? Uh, I'm Master Sabgrass's apprentice. Is that so? Ah, uh, then I think this will interest you. Think of a card. Any card. Uh, Ace of Spades, Three of Hearts, Four of Clubs. Mm, three of hearts. Tell me when to stop shuffling. Uh, now. Is this the card you're thinking of? Uh, wow, how'd you do that? You should know better than to ask a magician a question like that. Especially if you're one of Miss, one of Salvagrass's. You must see him potential in you. Deep, 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 deep down. I'll tell you what though. Wow, rude. I'll teach you how to do it if you can help me with something. Salvagrass would be so impressed he could probably forgo the slow sales day. Uh, is too astonished for words even. Keep it together, dear. I know it was amazing, but it wasn't that amazing. What's your name again? Uh, are you some kind of wizard? No, I'm not a wizard. And if I said I was, you shouldn't believe me in that case either. You do well to be more skeptical of people. What did your What did you say your name was? Uh, Bant Kushan. Bant Kushan? Really? Like the? I'm pretty sure that means Bant cake. Well, anyway, Bant. <clears throat> well, anyway, Bunt, I'll teach you that trick if you really help me with something. If you help me with something. Um, what kind of something? We have lots of things here at the magic shop. Can I interest you in... Uh... A curious cabinet? They still make those? After what happened to that cat? What happened to the cat? I'm not here for supplies. I'm actually in the market for an innocent young so-and-so to help me with a, a bit of a problem. More than a problem. More of a scourge, really. Okay, so you want to uh, recruit us? A scourge? I don't really ha see how I'd be very helpful. I mean, I'm starting to think I'm probably unqualified for the job I have now. Not at all. You're perfect. Me? Perfect? Were you just criticizing me for sleeping on the job? 
Come now, that's in the past. It was like five minutes ago. You shouldn't cling to things like that, especially if we're going to be working together. I don't know about this. What does it need help with? There's a fellow known in this parts uh, as Sir Barnabas. Barnabas. You might have heard of him. He engages in rather unsavory acts of speaking to the dead. Necromancy? Or being a medium? Which I am hoping you're already aware is a fraudulent activity. Oh, okay. So, so he's a fake medium. Like a trick I just showed you. It's illusory. However, unlike myself, Barnabas claims to have supernatural powers. A dangerous distinction between the two of us. Now, just in general, I find this practice unsavory, but there's a personal element here. Here, my brother Fennel, nice name, has been taken in by this charlatan. He's been spending all his wages on Barnabas's shows and plunging into financial ruin for the chance to talk to his deceased lover. Okay. I don't know. What if he really does have magic powers? Please tell me you aren't serious. Well, we don't know. I mean, that'd be kind of scary. People have, been, people have been performing these tricks for a long time. Most often, they use something called cold reading to use leading questions and generic statements to get information out of people. I've heard that before. Their marks don't even know what they're giving. Uh, their marks don't even know they're giving in them information. It's a con. You know a lot about this. Why don't you stop him yourself? I can't close, get close to Barnabas without him getting wise. I'm famous after all. His shows are different than most who speak to the dead. His predictions are weirdly specific. There's something he's doing that I can't quite figure out. I need someone who can investigate unnoticed. Someone like an innocent young rabbit with the general knowledge of magic who can report back to me. Maybe he is doing real magic. And if I do this, you'll teach me your card trick? If you do this, you'll gain much more than a card trick, my dear Punt. Punt Cushion. You'll gain the satisfying knowledge that you are performing in the service of the truth. Uh, I think I just want the card trick. <laughs> Please, I'm being really inspirational here. This is for the truth, and truth is justice. Just waiting to be reborn. Okay. Okay. As magicians, it is our our noble pursuit to expose those who would use our craft for evil. The difference between us and them is that we wear the label Faker Proudly Bunt. The moment we take off take that label off, it gives us a lot of power over people. Power at the cost of our morals. So what do you say? Okay. I guess that's reasonable. Okay. Um. Okay, but I've always wanted to be a plucky protagonist. Beautiful. You'll need this. Ooh. Beautiful. Um. What is that? I need fancy jewelry? Sorry, just adjusting my mic. It merely looks like fancy jewelry, my dear. Looks can be deceiving. It's a remote con communication device. Ah, oh, this guy's is a brooch. I used to use it in one of my earlier acts. I'm going to use this to stay in contact with you and advise you from afar. Now, I lost the other one, but I think I can finagle a radio mic here in Salvagrass's shop to work on its frequency. Whoa, that's loud. <clears throat> got it. Testing. Testing. Oops, got a little close to the mic. Sorry, it's working properly, though. <laughs> Absolutely perfect. This way, I can guide you no matter where you are. I think it's time I set you out on your own. Don't look scared. I'll be there. I'll be right there with you. I'll coach you through it as you try to gather into it on Barnabas at his favorite haunt. The Pitcher on Lime Street. Ooh, nice little pub, tavern, or a saloon. 
All right, so it's time you learn the proper art of questioning people and getting to the heart of things. You see, there are plenty of people in this room, and like all people, they have opinions on things, and some of those opinions are wrong. The way we're going to pro approach this is with the Socratic method. Hmm. The Soc I know you're going to try and interrupt me with some nonsense, so I'm not giving you the chance this time. The Socratic method is essentially this. A good idea takes work, and often people's views don't stand up to scrutiny. The more questions you ask, the more holes the opposition pokes in its own argument. So just keep asking questions. You've got good instincts, so I think you'll figure out the right kinds of questions to ask. Okay. So are we trying to sway people while getting information at the same time? Interesting. Sooner or later, your opponent will realize that they don't have an answer to one of your questions, or they fall into a fallacy. A fallacy in this context is a dishonest argument that isn't backed by logic. Either way, that's how you know you've got them. Um... Is this mean? On the contrary, if a person's belief, beliefs are never tested, they'll never know how rational they are. They may go home and think of a better argument for next time. Hmm. How will I know they're, when they're using a fallacy? I'll let you know via the birch. Okay, good. I wasn't going to interrupt you with nonsense. I'm sure. Wow, it doesn't really have confidence in me, huh? Now go. Give it a try. Uh, let's talk to the bear. He seems... Cool. Or she. Hello. Uh, hello there. Um, do you want something from the bar? I think we're a little too young for alcoholic drinks. Uh, I'd like a Shirley Temple, please. Sure thing. It is Temple-tastic. Nice. Can we get drunk? I don't want to do that, though. Sorry. Uh, can you tell me anything about Sir Bonavis? Huh, it's funny. You know, it's funny you ask. I was just at one of his shows. You were? Can you tell me anything about the show? You know, actually I can. I have these hearing aids, and the stupid things went out right as the show was starting. Talk about timing. I could barely hear anything. I'd try going back, but it's so expensive. Mmm, he's making a lot of money from this. I see. Uh, you were? Can you tell me anything about Sir Barnabas? Hmm, he's a fancy dresser? Okay. Uh, what do you mean he's a fancy dresser? I don't know. He had some cool patterns going on. I think he wore Argyle socks. He had a neat hat, stuff like that. Okay. Mmm. Anything else stand out about him? Oh yeah, actually. I was sort of self-conscious about being at the show. My hearing aids were acting up, so I couldn't really hear anything. I just had to go off the visuals. But I noticed that Sir Bonavis had hearing aids too. I thought that was pretty cool. It made me feel less insecure about myself. Aw. I see. Thanks for your time. Let's talk to Coffee Caracol. Hello. May I help you with something? Uh, uh, can you tell me anything about Sir Barnabas? Sorry, I've never heard of that person. He sounds fancy though. Uh, oh, um, would you practice the Socratic method with me? Alright, you're kind of a weird child with weird hobbies, but I've got that time, got some time to spare. I put forth the notion that a fish is an animal that swims. Uh, but otters swim. Does that make them fish? 
All right, then to amend my notion, a fish is an animal that swims and has scales. Uh, but don't snakes swim? They have scales. True. So to amend my notion further, a fish is an animal that swims, has scales, and has fins. Are you happy with this notion? I think we could push it further. All right. How? Uh. Hmm. Sharks don't have scales, but they are still fish. Not all fish swim, but they live in the water. Hmm. Okay. Eel does not have fins. But to do important quality of fish that they like, they have gills. Hmm. And not all fish swim. Okay, let's do all of the above. Alright, so a fish is an animal that lives in the water, sometimes has scales, lacks limbs, and has gills. How's that? Uh, I accept your notion and have no further questions. Nicely done. It's always important to be precise, and questioning helps us get to uh, specifics. You feel a bit smarter, also more confident that you know what a fish is. <laughs> it's so cute. Uh, intimidating cue. Like a lizard person? Huh? What do you want? Uh, I just wanted to ask you some questions. Are you a cop? You know you have to tell me if you are. Otherwise, it's enchantment. I don't think that's what they call it. I think that's entrapment. I know my rights. <laughs> um, I'm not a cop. I'm a magician's apprentice. My name is Bunt. Bunt Cushion. <laughs> now, will you, now will you talk to me? <laughs> Alright, you got me. I'm a tiny cop. <laughs> She's so cute. Hi, Bunt. I'm Hugh. Great to meet you. Now that we're all acquainted, I'm trying to make some money here, so you should keep moving. Make some money? Look, I shouldn't explain such an adult thing to a kid like you, but there's this thing called gambling grown-ups do sometimes. I run a betting pool, which is... I know what gambling is, and I know what a betting pool is, so you're pretty good at it then? Oh, well, not recently. I've been paying out a lot lately. That means I'm due for a big win. Okay. You've got a live one here. A clear example of the gambler's fallacy. Thinking that his past outcomes has any influence on his future outcomes. Flipping a coin and getting heads four times in a row doesn't mean that you're more likely to get tails on the fifth time. <clears throat> it's still a 50-50 chance every time. You should help him find a new career path or he'll end up in financial ruin. Uh, let's see. You, you're beautiful. Keep doing what you're doing. Nah, we should tell him. Hugh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but you're committing a fallacy. That's when you're doing something illogical, specifically the gambler's fallacy. The ads don't increase that you're going to win every time you lose. Okay. It's always 50%. We just think we're gonna, we're more likely to get one or the other because we're prone to magical thinking. Huh, magical thinking. Guess I never thought about it that way. Good thing I've got that side of, got that side business counterfeiting. <laughs> you're right, kid. I'll see you around. Oh, and if you see an angry pony looking for me, I was never here. That. This feels kind of good. What does? I don't know. This... <laughs> Helping people. Well, keep at it then. <clears throat> keep at it then. For once, you don't have to play the apprentice. It isn't just that. I mean, that's definitely a good feeling. 
So keep at it. As a magician's apprentice, challenging people's ideas is probably new to you, and that's probably exciting. You're used to being the one who's challenged. Now you get to do the challenging, and that's good. It is an expression of helping, even if some people don't see it that way. There are lots of people in the world who need their ideas challenged, and many in the world who will challenge ideas you need to change as well. Huh. All right, I'm gonna leave the episode here. It is really cute so far. I love it. It's funny, and I really like this art style. It's really um, it's like hand drawn. But uh, anyways, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed my video, and I'll see you next time. Bye.